Hey guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So before we get into the review, uh, we learned this week that Impact Wrestling has officially cut its ties with Jeff Jarrett and GFW. Um, there was a few things going on, I believe, earlier in the week, maybe last weekend, about Jarrett showing up to a promotion drunk or drinking in the locker room. So apparently he has checked himself into a WWE-sponsored rehab center. So best of luck to Jeff, and hopefully he gets everything uh, straightened out. So on to Impact. Uh, I thought this was a really good episode, actually. This was their, I guess, global show. Uh, we went to Canada twice, Mexico, and Japan. Um, I think we only had two matches at the Impact Zone, and the rest of the matches took place overseas or uh, on the borders. So uh, we opened the show with EC3 and James Storm versus Tejano and Fantasma in Irapado, or Irapudo, Irapado, whatever, Mexico. Um, this was a fun match. They were uh, really playing up the disdain between uh, Fantasma and Tejano. Uh, even though they were both on the AAA side, they still weren't getting along. Uh, at one point, I think uh, Phantasma went off the ropes and Tejano pulled them down from the outside, just kind of like, uh, I guess, showing each other that we're still not friends, even though we're on the same team. But uh, at the end of the match, uh, Phantasma hit a package pile driver on EC3. He goes for the pin. Uh, Tejano grabs Phantasma off of EC3 and throws him aside, uh, so he tries to get the pin. Phantasma kicks Tejano in the face, Te Tejano goes out of the ring, and Storm hits a super kick on Phantasma and picks up the win. So, like I said in the beginning, that there was matches from all over the world, uh, I, I really like this. I it kind of adds a little bit of originality into shows um i like that i mean granted all four of these guys wrestle generally in impact or we've seen them in impact uh, i like that we're able to see new talent that normally wouldn't be able to see um so we go back to the i guess the impact zone and uh eli drake is backstage on his cell phone and uh dutch mantel is trying to get his attention and uh he talks to him and says that uh eli has missed uh, media calls and promotions and Eli basically says he's busy and he's done doing that stuff and there's a bunch of other people in the locker room that should be doing it rather than him since he is the global champion. He's got more important things to worry about. So we go to Jim Cornette's office and Scott Demore and uh, Dutch Mantel are arguing back and forth about Eli and his actions and Cornette comes in and he's going, what the hell is wrong with Eli Drake? And, you know, basically because of what Mantell said, that he wasn't keeping up with the media calls and promotion. And uh, he says, you know, we uh, we do have Eli versus uh, Johnny Impact coming up at Bound for Glory, and there's a chance he may lose his title. So uh, it looks like they're uh, trying to screw Eli out of the uh, title, or at least hoping that he loses. So uh, this was a pretty heavy Eli show uh, outside of the matches from around the world, and, well, he was in the match, one of the matches that was in the Impact Zone. Uh, so after this, we head over to Canada in Border City Wrestling, where OVE takes on Brett Banks and Phil Atlas. We didn't get the complete match here. Uh, the match started, I'm guessing, somewhere in the middle. Um, Jay Chris was pretty much out of it, just laying on the apron, so Dave was doing the majority of the work. Um, OVE picked up the uh, the win here with a uh, spike tombstone pile driver. So from what I saw, it was good. Um, I think it was Brett Banks that did a couple of... Uh, I think he did a flip over the ropes, and he did a suicide dive during the match. Both looked very nice. So like I said earlier, it's nice to see some talent outside of Impact and other promotions that you wouldn't normally see. So, up next we get a promo with Stefan Bonner and Moose basically talking about all the events that have happened or transpired between them and American Top Team. 
And then we go uh, back to Eli. And uh, I guess two guys backstage, producers or technical or tech guys, are uh, talking to Eli saying that, uh, you know, do you have a free moment? We, we need uh, you to do an interview with Mackenzie. It'll only be 45 seconds long. And uh, Eli is like, well, who sent you here? Just go set everything up and I'll do it. So that was funny. Um, that brings us to Pro Wrestling Noah in Japan, where uh, Eddie Edwards is facing Marafuji. Uh, this match was really good. Uh, there's a couple of great spots where uh, uh, Eddie uh, Marafuji removed the mat from outside the ring, and uh, Eddie Edwards went for a suicide dive through the ropes and took a nasty landing. Um, and Marafuji hit a pile driver on the apron, which also looked nasty, but th this was a back and forth match. Uh, each one, uh, a lot of counter countering, uh, the other's moves. And, uh, eventually Eddie Edwards gets the win with the diehard Flosion. So great match here. Um, Marafuji is a top talent. He, uh, has wrestled I think most of his career in pro wrestling Noah and he worked new Japan actually last year wrestling Okada in the G1 climax. So some top talent working here. So then we get an OVE promo. They're walking outside and, uh, they say they're really sick and tired of LAX. And he's, uh, Dave says that, uh, they're always, uh, LAX is always talking about family. Like we don't have any, and to fight family, you got to bring family. And then all of a sudden you see a guy's arm with a bunch of tattoos and shattered glass on it. And it is Sammy Callahan. So I think I spoke about this a couple weeks ago. Uh, bringing Sammy Callahan is huge. He's a big name. As long as this doesn't turn out like his uh, Solomon Crow run in NXT, which was absolutely terrible. Um, I really didn't know who Sammy Callahan was when... I was watching NXT and the Solomon Crow character was there, but I thought he had a lot of potential just looking at him and watching his matches. And then he went to the independence and continued to have great success. So this is a huge move by Impact. Hopefully uh, we get a lot from him. Uh, like I said, this is the type of talent I would love to see Impact bring in rather than ex-WWE guys. Um, so yeah. So we finally get that McKenzie interview with Eli Drake about his tag team match later. He basically keeps saying that he's busy, and then he runs down Garza and Impact, and then tells her to get lost. Um, and we go back to Canada, where we get a four-way match between Petey Williams, Inders Abraham, Tariq, and Kiyomiya. And this was a fun match. Uh, a lot of Petey Williams, uh, strong, I guess you'd say. He looked really good in the match, uh, and he ended up getting the win with the Canadian Destroyer on Tariq. Again, talent you wouldn't normally see. So, then we get a promo from Eli Drake, and he's talking about the tag team match later on tonight with him and Chris Adonis versus Johnny Impact and Garza Jr. And then after that, Johnny talks about the match tonight and the match at Bound for Glory. So I'm really glad they're pushing Eli a lot here. Um, he is their global champion. He should be the face of the company. So good things here. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he dropped the title to Impact at Bound for Glory, but I would really like him to hold on to it and them to kind of going forward build around Eli Drake I mean he's good on the mic he's decent in the ring and he's not ex-talent really I mean he wrestled I think a little in NXT and yeah he's pretty much made his name in Impact so that's really the guy you should be behind and that brings us to our first match in the Impact Zone which was the tag team match with Drake and Adonis versus Johnny Impact and Garza Jr. So this is a good match. Um, they gave the two matches in the Impact Zone a good amount of time to breathe, which is nice to see because we do tend to get a lot of squash matches and very short matches uh, when they have a handful of matches during the night. Um, 
And it's nice to see Garza Jr. doing something. Uh, I, I didn't really get why they put him into the mix originally when he was facing uh, Adonis a couple weeks back and then when he faced uh, Johnny Impact. But good stuff. I hope they do something with him moving forward. The, uh, the But I, like I was saying, the match was a good match. Uh, Adonis and Eli Drake worked well together, of course. They were uh, isolating Garza Jr., and then when Garza and Impact got together, they had a couple good spots. Adonis and Drake isolated Garza. Garza makes the hot tag to Impact. Impact running wild, basically, in the ring, hitting a couple good spots. Eli ends up hitting Garza, or brings him outside the ring, drops him on the guardrail. He goes on the apron. Impact throws Adonis in into Eli on the apron and he rolls up Adonis for the win so impact standing tall two weeks before bound for glory we head back to Mexico uh where Trevor Lee faces Ultimo Ninja who is apparently the brother of Garza Jr uh this took place in the crash wrestling uh organization this is a good match a lot of back and forth a couple of good spots in Ultimo Ninja was pretty good in the ring, and Trevor Lee is always good, uh, especially his stuff outside of Impact, because he's generally not able to put on the quality of matches in Impact because they're not given as much time as he does in, what, PWG, I believe, and other promotions outside. So Trevor Lee wins here with the double stomp. Then we get, I guess, a message from King Mo talking about what happened with Bonner and Moose coming into American Top Team headquarters or training facility or whatever, and basically why he's getting involved. So they're really hyping this, and that brought us to the main event with Moose versus Bobby Lashley. Now, this was a decent enough match. Uh, outside the ring, Dan Lambert kept getting himself involved. Uh, Stephen Bonner wasn't able to because the referee obviously held him back, so the heel was able to get the attack. Um, Moose ended up getting the upper hand and went to hit and hit Lashley with the drop kick as Lashley was laying against the bottom turnbuckle. At this point, uh, Lambert gets in the ring with a trophy he was holding, hits Moose over the head, match gets thrown out. Uh, Bonner gets in the ring and hits Lashley with almost what looked like to be a Rainmaker clothesline. Uh, then American Top Team comes out from the back. Beats down Bonner. Moose comes in with a chair for the save. He's hitting them all, and then he takes one of the guys, or most of the guys exit the ring, standing on the outside. He takes one of the guys and power bombs him over the uh, top rope onto the rest of the guys outside the ring. He grabs the microphone, and then he says, I want to make this match at Bound for Glory a little interesting. So he challenges them to a six sides of steel match. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's pretty fitting for a match with a bunch of UFC fighters and, and Moose. Um, hopefully this is bringing them or putting some eyes on the product. I mean, I'm sure most of us wrestling fans don't really care too much about it. I'm glad if some people are. I personally don't, but like I said, as long as it's bringing eyes to the product, that's all that matters. And then we close the show with an... LAX promo with Conan hyping the 5150 Street Fight at Bound for Glory. So, like I said, this was a good show overall. They're, they didn't really need to build most of the feuds. Um, I would have liked to see the women on this show, at least maybe something between Taya and Rosemary, or I think we haven't seen anything between Gail, Allie, and Sienna within the last two or three weeks. I remember last week um, we heard that Taryn Terrell is no longer in the Fatal 4-Way match because apparently she's parted ways with the company and may even be getting out of wrestling altogether. There was I heard a rumor, don't know how true it was, that when she took that slap from Gail that actually like ruptured her eardrum or something like that, something to that effect that uh, actually caused some damage, and that's why I think she's reconsidered wrestling. But, uh... Yeah, good show overall. So, if you like what you've seen here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.